Hi, hello, and welcome to the Therapy by Craft YouTube channel. My name is Eunice. I am the maker and host behind Therapy by Craft. And if you are joining me for the first time, hi, hello, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you, thank you for deciding that you want to hang out with me again. <laughs> Um, there is so much to go over today, so much, including um, August stats, what I've been working on, my blankets and sock updates, as well as some giveaways that I am so excited about, and a couple of garments that I am, um, that I've been tempted to cast on and might break my garment dry spell. You shall see. But yeah. So I hope you have a beverage of some sort. I hope you have some knitting with you or I don't know that you're doing something while I chat. Um, and yeah, let's just jump right in. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram, Ask Therapy by Craft, and descriptions, details for all of the things that I talk about today will be in the description box right down below. And if you have not yet already, um, and you are, you know, continuing to come back and you enjoy my company, please consider subscribing to my channel. I am so close to 3,000 subscribers, y'all. Like, so close. And once I hit that number, I actually have another giveaway planned um, because my friends are freaking awesome and super, super generous. So with that said, I think that's all my admin stuff. Let's start with... August stats. So um, I am not the greatest at keeping track of all of my projects and stuff. So this was the best that I could do. <laughs> I think Ravelry is my saving grace. I do put all of my projects, including start dates and end dates on my Ravelry projects page. But if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have any info at all. <laughs> but here is well, my stats for August is actually very simple. I finished seven objects in August. All of them were socks and all of them were gifts. So I don't have any of them except for two with me because the two that I have are Sam's. <laughs> and one of them I'll share, I'll be sharing with you um, as a finished object. But yeah, uh, summer sock camp. I finished 15 socks for summer sock camp. Um, and seven of like the last seven of my summer sock camp entries were, um, in the month of August in total, I used 328 grams. So how many, okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, f four of them were like adult shorty socks. Two of them were like kid toddler socks. And one of them was for like a big kid. But yeah, 328 grams. That's surprisingly not a lot given that I made seven socks total. But anywho, yeah. Interesting, right? I'm very curious to see what my um, grams out and my total number of finished objects will be for September, especially since I none of these numbers include like any squares that I did for blankets, anything that I did for my cozy memories blanket, for my granny square blanket, like it doesn't count any of those grams and those blankets are getting a little bit big. So anyway, yeah, seven socks in August, not bad. Um, one of the finished objects since the last time I spoke with you is the Sharma socks that I made for my boss's daughter. I don't have them with me, so I'll have to insert a picture here. They were made with my Valkyrie Fiber Arts. Is that what it is? I think it's my Valkyrie Fiber Arts um, sock, self-striping sock yarn in the colorway Sharma. I pretty much used almost all of what I had left over. It was really great. And then for the heels, I used an Arcane Fiber Works colorway, but I don't remember what it was. Um, 
those were very fun to make. I think it ended up being 50 grams total exactly, which was very nice. The other finished object were these socks. I used the, um, well, I sort of used the Weekend Shorty Socks by Summer Lee for this pair. And the yarn that I used is actually a um, like I'm, I'm, this was made as a sample. My friend Audrey at Dusty Yarn Co. She sent me some yarn to test out. She's going to be doing, I guess, a new base for her sock yarns. And she was like, hey, Eunice, do you want to try out this yarn? And then can you give me feedback on its durability? If it's, I don't know, if you like it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I can definitely do that. And so she sent me some lovely yarn. She asked me to pick out some colors from her color library. And uh, when she sent it over to me, she sent me basically three sock sets. Two of them were colorways that I picked. One of them was from her partner. And it just tickled me to no end. Like it gave me so much joy to see my name on the sock like colorway she like put them together oh I don't know if you can see that but it says Eunice's sock set I was like ah that's me I'm Eunice <laughs> she like made a sock set especially for me and I'll put up a picture again for um I don't know just the lovely yarn sock sets it was a 50 gram with two 20 gram minis and these colors are so beautiful. But anyway, as soon as I got, as soon as I got the yarn, um, I knew that I wanted to whip up Sam's socks first because then she can wear them. She can go to school in them. I can put them in the washer. I can, you know, really get a good sense of how durable this space is and give that feedback over to Audrey. So these got whipped up very, very quickly. What am I? I don't know. I think I made them in four days. I don't remember my start and end dates, but I think I made them in four days. Yeah. So far, I'm really liking them. They feel very soft. It's a 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon blend, and they absolutely, you, the merino is definitely coming through. It's very soft, it's a four ply, so um, there wasn't a lot of splitting when I was uh, working it up. I use Chow Gu needles, US 1 or 2.25 millimeter on Magic Loop, and it was like butter. It just, it worked very nicely. Um, there weren't a lot of snags. There's a little bit of a halo to my finished garment. I really don't know that you're gonna be able to see that at all. But because of that halo, it makes me wonder if it's gonna pill. If it does, it's fine. I mean, there's socks and most of the socks that I have pill. So, you know, that's not a problem. But um, they feel very durable. It's not scratchy at all. If you wanted to make a garment out of it, I think that would actually work really well too. It's, it's a really good base. So I'm very excited to make up, make some more socks with it. I have plans for how to use these different colors. Ooh, let me show you the colors actually. Some of the 50 gram skeins that I got. I don't remember um, what the colorway names are. Oh gosh, I'm, I know I have some in here too. that beautiful oh and that luster do you see that oh it's like shining it is so pretty it's so good so these are the three 50 grams that I received and then there's some minis in here as well I'll show you um, so Zach set was this this was the 50 grams and the two 20 grams and then I picked out oh, is this right is it this 
was it was it like that and then the other was this oh it's so good the colors are so good ah i cannot wait to i don't know i i, I can't wait to work with these um and make like full socks with them ah, so good um anyway those are my finished objects those are the two that i finished since the last time we spoke and then i have four whips to share with you um some of them are knit knit blah, blah, blah. some of them are knits some of them are crochet i have just caught the crochet bug i think i just i don't know I, all i want to do is knit socks and crochet blankets that's just where my heart is at right now and that has been showing like that's been really showing up in my granny square blanket this is my scrappy granny square blanket that i'm working on the last time i showed it to you guys i had this much done but since then i have doubled it so this side and I've made three more squares. So for this blanket, I am using about 10 grams of each color. Like I, whatever I have left over in my 80, 20 or 85, 15 base yarns is what I'm putting into this blanket. And um, I was originally going to knit socks with all of my advents from the Macmillan Fiber Co. Um, 2023 advent. I was gonna knit socks with them and then after knitting socks with them, I was going to make like a small uh, granny square to put into my fingering weight granny square blanket. But then I couldn't wait to do all of that. I just wanted to make a DK weight. I, I wanted to work on my DK weight granny square blanket. And so I ended up just winding off about 10 grams each um, or 10 grams of each of the colorways and making little small minis out of them like this. And I'm holding the yarn double with itself. So um, a strand from the outside, a strand from the inside, and then I'm just working it that way. And once I started, I couldn't stop. I just, I just kept wanting to work on this. This is all I wanted to do. So you can see that I put in um, some of my Dusty Yarn Co. yarns in here, and then the rest are actually from my McMillan Fiber Co. Advent. Like, how pretty is that right there, that square? And then I think this is such a beautiful square too. All of them are really lovely, like, but yeah, I've been very much enjoying this. I can't seem to put it down. I just want to crochet all the blankets and granny squares. Like they really have my heart. Like I can't, I can't stop. I just, I just keep wanting to do granny squares. Speaking of which, I haven't really worked on it that much, but I do want to show you since I pretty much held it up. Um, Look at how much I did on this granny square blanket. This is, this has been a lot of fun too. Like, ah, oh, I love it. I love, I don't know, what is it about like crocheted blankets that just feel so cozy and nice? Like I'm, I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Um, anyway, I wasn't even planning to talk about this one, but here we are. Okay. And then speaking of granny or not granny squares, speaking of crocheted blankets, I also, um, have a story about the rainbow ripple blanket. You guys probably already know that I'm a big fan of Kay from the crazy sock lady podcast. And she not only likes knitting a lot of socks, but she also likes knitting scrappy blankets and crocheting as well. 
um, and one of the blankets that she's often crocheting like on rotation is the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket by Celeste Young. So months ago when I was binge watching her past episodes and she was making these blankets, um, I found that I was very curious about this blanket. I think also, um, yeah, there were other podcasters who were crocheting this blanket. And so I went to Joann's, I picked up a big old like Lion Brand Mandala. It's like one of those really chunky big cakes and I started making one and let me show you where I was at. This is what it looks like. I forget what the colorway is, but can you guys see how ripply that is? I was making it and I was like, oh, it's very ripply. Is that the ripple part of the rainbow ripple blanket? <laughs> like it was, I don't know, it wasn't laying flat, but I wondered, I don't know, is it just gonna block out, blah, 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 I don't know. Then, who was I watching? I was watching Noble Character Crafts. Is that her handle? Uh, I can't remember, I think it's Noble Character Crafts, but she was talking about her rainbow ripple blanket, and she mentioned in there something about how there were a couple of rounds where you're doing increases and then there's a round where you don't do any increases at all. And I was like, wait, what? Are you for real? Because I was increasing every single round. And I think that's why it was all ripply and not laying flat. And I was like, dang it. Oh my gosh, I screwed up. I screwed up. And I went back, I read my crocheting and I realized that I did that from the very beginning. So I'm going to have to rip back the entire blanket. like. This entire blanket was done incorrectly. It's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of my life that I'm going to have to frog. So I was very discouraged and bummed, but then I felt this like newfound determination to get it right this time. <laughs> so I just said, okay, I'm gonna rip this and try again later, next time. I don't even want to deal with this right now. And I cast on or I started another rainbow ripple blanket and this one is going very well i am very excited to show you i am making a single color monochrome that was it monochrome rainbow ripple blanket i'm not using self-striping yarn Ta -da! i'm using malabrigo rios in the colorway Sandbank. And if you guys know anything about Malabrigo, is that they do, I think they kettle dye their yarn. So they don't even have like a, um, what's it called? They don't even have like a dye lot. I think every skein pretty much is pretty unique. So when you use Malabrigo Rios, especially, it's a worsted weight yarn, um, and you're making a garment, for example, you really have to alternate your skeins because the difference in color is pretty stark, as you can see, right? So you can totally tell where one skein ended and another one began. Like you can totally see the difference there. So I had six skeins, I think six or seven skeins of Malabrigo Rios because I had purchased it many, many moons ago to make a sweater. Now that sweater did not happen. Um, I actually ended up frogging the whole thing. It wasn't working out for me, which is fine. But then I had like all this Malabrigo Rios just sitting around and I didn't know what to do with it. I think I had tried making a beanie once, but it was just whatever. And because of the extreme color difference in each hank, I was a little bit stuck on what to do. But this blanket It's totally fine to have some of that variation. It looks almost like it's intentional to have different, you know, colors in there. And so far, I'm actually really, really loving it. I love that it's kind of a neutral, but it's still really pretty. Um, the various, like the differences in each hank makes it very interesting. You can definitely see the chevron is it chevron? Yeah, like 
the peaks and valleys. It's quite large actually. And I have um, this much left to go and then another one. So I think by the time I'm done with this, it's gonna be a very, very good size. And I'm planning on gifting this to a friend. Um, yeah, and I have a feeling that it's gonna block out very, very nicely. Um, I'm planning to give it a good soak. And then I think because it's a super wash yarn, it's going to grow a little bit and become like nice and flowy. And oh, I'm so excited about this. And I'm so excited, in fact, that I'm kind of tempted to make another one in Malabrigo Rios. I am using a US 5 millimeter hook. Yeah, it is an H hook, five millimeters, a clover hook. And it is my all-time favorite. Clover hooks are my, my favorite. And yeah, I'm tempted to make another one of these because um, I like the weight of it. I like the very like the slight variation in color. Um, it's very soothing. And now that I got it right and it actually lays flat, um, <laughs> I can see myself making more and more of these. Now, how many of you guys actually use a circle blanket though? Like a round blanket? Is that, is that a, is that a nice shape for a blanket? I don't know. I don't think I've ever used a circle blanket before. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think it's beautiful. I think it looks pretty, but is it functional? Let me know. <laughs> um, the last thing I'll say about this is that the pattern it kind of reminds me of a crocheted version of the, is it the anthology throw? Do you guys know which one I'm talking about? It's a very popular circular knitted blanket um, that people use with their advents a lot. There's like increases that are happening. I don't know, it's a very, yeah. I think this is a really, um, this kind of reminds me of, of that blanket for some reason, maybe because of what could look like eyelets, I don't know, but it's crocheted. So for me, it's faster and it's a little bit easier and I totally get it. I get the appeal for this. I wasn't really seeing it when I was doing it with the, my other one, the Lion Brand yarn, but that's because I wasn't doing it correctly. So, you know, that's my bad. Oh, okay. Next, the next two works in progress that I want to share with you are both socks and they are being housed in my adorable project bags. Am I becoming a project bag girly now? I really wasn't before, but I don't know. Again, I see the appeal because they're so cute and I don't feel the pressure to like knit it up because it's not yarn. Anyway, this project is being housed in my Mountain State Stitches bag. It is so cute. I am so happy with this purchase. Um, it's a drawstring bag, and I realize that I like drawstring better than zipper bags. I learned this about myself recently because as I was working with one of my zippered project bags, I noticed that the yarn kept getting caught in the teeth of the zipper. So since I noticed that that was happening and it, I don't know, like mentally it kind of bugged me because I'm like, ah, oh, is it freeing? Is it going to rip the yarn? I don't know. So now I like the drawstring bags instead. Anyway, this project bag is housing my second breakfast socks. I forget, I think the pattern is by Sock Witchery. Yes. She had a sale recently, I think it was a birthday sale. And that's not when I got this pattern, but it is my second breakfast socks. It is a squishy, it's just a squishy fabric. And it's a very easy to memorize pattern. Um, I am on the foot of this sock and I am almost done with the gusset on this sock. I think after all of these like color block 
socks that I was making, I was in the mood for a patterned sock, like an easy patterned sock. And yeah, sock witchery was the first um, like sock pattern designer that came to mind for me. I am using one of my full moon fiber yarns. This is called Metamorphic. I love the blues and the teals and the greens and how it all kind of works together. It's dark and moody, but also kind of, I don't know. It's great. I really like it. And I decided on this color because it's going to be for a friend of mine for her birthday. And she really likes blues, like dark blues. And I was like, girl, I got you. I know exactly what color to use. So that's being housed here. That's my, I'm, I'm hoping this, well, this is going to get done in the next week or so for sure. And then the last whip I want to share is being housed in my, I think this is Barley Pearls, Barley and Pearls. I think that's right. Oh yes. Barley Pearls bag. The little cats. They're so cute. And again, drawstring is my go-to. And this is housing a pair of vanilla socks because when I'm on the go or when I'm sitting in meetings and stuff like that, I don't want to be thinking about a pattern and I don't want to carry multiple balls of yarn with me so I cast on this one. And this is the colorway Starry Night. And this will be my last um, like summery sock that I cast on. I think after this one, everything else will be in like the fall, like moody, cooler months inspired vibe. Um, but this will be my last summer sock yeah, and it's so beautiful. Oh, this I am doing one at a time because it's just straight vanilla. But the other one I was working in tandem and I want to show you what I did. I mentioned this last time, but with a yarn like this one where it's not self-striping and the color doesn't really matter all that much in terms of like the order of the color, I have stopped caking them, like re-caking my balls into two to 50 gram balls. And instead I'm working one sock from the outside of the ball and another sock from the center of the ball. Now it gets very messy and there's a lot of yarn management that needs to happen. So I don't know if this will be my preferred method moving forward in the future the inconvenience of having all of these things like tangled up with one another might <laughs> deter me from continuing this but for now i think it's fine um i don't mind it as much i think it bothers me more to have to cake up something and then re-cake it again so anyway that's what i'm doing i again am not doing that for my starry night socks because that's just straight vanilla and i'll just do one at a time. But yes, those are my current works in progress. I am very happy with the ratio that I have right now of socks and blankets. When I'm home in the evenings watching my shows or listening to my audiobooks or whatnot, I will work on my blankets because that's been giving me so much joy, but because it's not as portable, I like to work on them at home. My socks are what I take with me when I go to work. That's my lunchtime knitting. Ooh, fun fact. The way I'm able to get a lot of knitting done, especially when I'm at work, is that I actually eat while I work. And then at lunchtime, I just knit. So I, a part of what I do, I have to check a lot of emails. I have to run reports. I have to, you know, as a manager, that's kind of what I have to do. So oftentimes what I'll do is I will heat up my food and then I'll eat and I'll work at the same time so that I'm technically still working and then 
when it's my lunch break, like it's actually time to take a break break, then I will pull out my knitting. And so then my hands are free to knit. So that's how I get at least 30 minutes to an hour of knitting every day because that's how I take my lunches. But anywho, okay. So the last thing I wanna talk about before I let you guys go are some fun giveaways as well as garments that are really enticing me to come out of my garment knitting funk. So there's two patterns in particular that I wanna talk to you about today. And I'll actually start with the pattern that was recently released by the designer who also designed what I'm wearing. I am wearing the coloring book raglan. This is actually an old knit. Um, this is designed by Amy Schur and I don't know, they just crank out the best designs. Yeah, their designs are so great. And this one is a very classic one. Um, I made mine out of Green Letter Days Toyland kit. This is her DK version, I think, DK worsted version. But the yarn that I used was a DK weight yarn. And they recently released a pattern called the Campus Fest. I'll just put that here. And it is so like classy, classic. The silhouette is really classic. And it is exactly what I think I've been looking for that I didn't realize that I've been looking for. Um, I have been really liking that academic vibe for the fall and especially um being able to wear a vest over just like a white tee or, or whatnot there's something about that i don't know i've been really liking that vibe and i have been eyeing knitted vests except i don't know if you guys feel this way too but anytime i see knitwear in the wild like at the store i pause always because i ask myself can I make that? Like Eunice, you can make that. And if you can make it, you have enough yarn to make it, just make it. Now, do I? No, but that's still what goes on in my head. I still feel like I need to make it. Anyway, but the Campus Fest by Amy Schur, I, I just adored it. Like as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, I need to get it. And I think it's the first garment pattern that I purchased with my own money. Who, who, why did I say that? Like my own money. Who, who, who else would that money belong to? But anyway, it's the first garment pattern that I purchased um, in like over a year. And I was excited to do it. I think I woke up the day of the pattern release, like, okay, today's Campus Fest day. And I got the pattern and, uh, and so here's the yarn that I'm thinking about using for that pattern. It is. Sorella Yarns Cognac colorway in her classic DK base. It is a, yeah, I already caked it up in preparation for this cast on. It is a beautiful orangey rust color. It's so good. I have, I think, six skeins of this and it's just been sitting in my yarn pantry because I have stopped knitting garments but I knew that I wanted a sweater quantity of this because why wouldn't I want a sweater or some kind of garment in this color and yeah I think this is the one I think this is what I'm going to use. The construction of it, it's a bottom up construction. It has a V neck with buttons, like a button down. It's a V neck with a button band. <laughs> um, yeah, and it just looks very classy and very classic. Uh, there are two different views. You can have a cropped version or like a hip length version. I'm going to go with a crop version. Um, and I'm very excited about it because it is also, I think the gauge is like 22 stitches or four, four inches. I think it's going to go by so fast. And since I've basically been knitting socks, like all I've been knitting are socks, I think this is just going to fly off the needles. I mean, 
yeah, going from a US 1 to knitting with a US 4, 6 millimeter, yeah, I think that's going to go by very quickly. But yes, that's the first garment that I want to talk to you guys about because, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to the SoCal Fiber Festival later on in November. And my plan is to finish this vest in time for the SoCal Fiber Fest because that is what I would like to wear on one of the days at the Fiber Festival. The other garment that I'm hoping to finish by then is the Evelyn Top by Sarah of Noel Knits. And that is the second garment that I am tempted by that I have been tempted by recently to like break my no garment knitting fast. I mean, it's not really a fast. I didn't intentionally do that, but you know what I mean? Like I just haven't been knitting garments. It's been a very, very long time since I knit a garment for myself, right? Sam's birthday dress was like the only exception. Um, but the campus vest and the Evelyn top, oh, it just looks so good. The Evelyn top is another tank top or it is a tank top. And that one's knit top down. So you start with the straps and then you work the body. And it is like um like a square neck tank. Um, you can have thicker straps or you can have thinner straps. And it is kind of a brilliant design element, I guess, because you actually knit the whole thing in the round. There is a faux button band on the bottom on the front and because it's a faux button band, uh, you can knit the whole thing in the round. It's stocking it in the round, and which means that you don't have to use fingering weight and purl every other row. Like, I think that's just brilliant. And the other benefit to having a faux button band instead of like an actual like open garment that you're closing in the front is that you don't have any gaping and there's no gaps from the buttons pulling or whatever. So Sarah, as always, was so thoughtful about this design. Even the way that she named the design, I just thought was really cute and brilliant. If you're not sure um, what I'm talking about, then check her out, like check out her Instagram account. She is both a children's knitwear designer and an adult knitwear designer. And her stuff is just adorable. So for the Evelyn top, I have a couple of yarns in mind. I haven't decided yet. Um, I have a bunch of knitting for olive merino. And these are the two colors that I'm thinking about. I actually already have a tank in this color. And I, and I, and I know that I like it. So that's something. This is the plum clay colorway. It's more brown than plum but there is some there are some notes of like a deep purple in here i guess and then the other color i'm thinking about is dusty sea green and it's yeah and it's a really nice like um dusty green <laughs> i don't know my words are failing me today but anyway, uh, I don't know which color I like more. I like both. Does that mean I have to make two? Mm, I don't know. But I'm planning to make the th th the thicker stripe, uh, the thicker strap version, and uh, I cannot wait. I I don't know. I'm planning to wear it to work, and so I think the merino will be really nice. It'll be um, next to skin soft, and I'll be able to wear it as a layering piece, especially in the winter. Um, Sometimes my office is a little too warm, sometimes it's a little too cold, so it'll be a great layering piece for me to wear to work. Now, here's a really, really exciting part about both of these garments. When the Evelyn top um, came out, when Sarah was sharing tester photos and stuff, I think I like messaged her, I don't know what compels me, but I DM'd her and I was like, ah, Sarah, this is amazing, like cannot wait. I, I want to make one of those and that's saying a lot because I haven't really wanted to make a garment in such a long time and it it just so happens that in the same month there's two pattern releases that I just feel so thrilled about. 
Um, and I just gave her a heads up like, hey, I will probably be casting that on sometime this year. And heads up, I will probably be gushing about it on the podcast. And Sarah was so, so sweet. She was like, girl, I got you. Let me gift this pattern to you. So she gifted me this pattern, y'all. And not only that, she gifted me additional patterns to share with you. So she said, you know, hey, why don't like, I got you, why don't I send this over to you? And then I'll give you three additional copies for you to share with your viewers on your podcast. I was so touched. I was like, girl, you don't need to do that. Like, I wanna support you and I want to, like, I don't, I, I wanna just support you. Like, would you be willing to, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's okay, you don't have to give this to me. But she was like, no, 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 no. I want to give this to you and so she did and being the amazing thoughtful and generous soul that she is she is yeah giving you guys some copies as well so if you are interested in the Evelyn top and you would like to maybe knit one with me please comment down below with the hashtag Evelyn that's E V E L Y N I'll also include that in the you know description below so that you know how to spell it and I will pick three winners in my next podcast episode to send that pattern over to you. I, yeah, I'm so happy about that. Uh, side note, I will not ever like put in the comments that you've won. I will say it, like I'll announce it in my next podcast episode. So that's all you really have to do to enter for that giveaway, hashtag Evelyn, in the comments down below um and yeah subscribe and let's knit one together and not only that amy has also gifted a couple of copies of the campus vest pattern as well and she's also the best they generously offer two copies of the campus vest and if you are interested in knitting the campus vest with me then please comment down below with the hashtag campus hashtag c-a-m-p-u-s campus and that will be my way of knowing what patterns you are interested in i am just so stinking blessed to have friends who are not only creative and brilliant and genius but generous too and so yeah please subscribe, comment down below with whatever pattern you are interested in. And I will announce in my next podcast episode who my winners are. And not only that, last thing that I will say is like I mentioned early, early on, um, I'm so close to 3000 subscribers and I have maybe, maybe another giveaway planned for when I reach that number for 3,000. So if that's next episode, then I will not only announce the winners for the pattern prizes, but I also will be doing a giveaway for my 3,000 3, subscriber thing. Milestone? Celebration? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so I, again, am so thankful that you decided to join me today. I am curious, what are you knitting on? What are you working on? What are you excited for now that September is here? And hopefully what that means is that the cooler weather is soon to follow. <laughs> um, I, for one, am going to continue knitting socks. I am planning to knit these garments. I'm gonna continue working on my blankets and I'm very curious to see what all I will have either finished or where I will be with each of these things when I see you next time. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, I hope you're doing well and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wind and rain.